We're here at the Birch. I know, I keep hearing about this place. It's a bird sanctuary, it's a brewery. Can't wait to go inside and see what's going on. Well, I stopped thinking as soon as you said brewery. It's gonna be a good day. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. Hey, hey look who's here. Glad you could make it, Chris. Yeah, you know, it's a little early for me. Hey, look, well, there's only one thing. I just want you to stay out of trouble. This is a sanctuary. Relax. We're going to have fun time. Look, I'm not going to mess with the birds unless they mess with me first. All right, fair enough. Let's, well, let's drink some beer. Look at these gorgeous birds. Oh, they're just birds. Well, they're not just birds. They're rescue birds. I wonder where they get them from. So Rebecca, the owner, decided that she wanted to fuse her passion for animal rescue and craft beer together and opened up this place. That's a great idea. What are you thinking, Chris? As long as they have beer, I'm good to go. Chris, I'm with you. What are we waiting for? Let's get inside. I think I'm with you guys. Hey, welcome to the brewery, Reg. Thank you. Glad you could make it. It's where we make beer. We've got our walk-in cooler over there where I have my bright tank. <laughs> well, that's uh, Renee's idea of being hilarious and awesome because no one likes a dirty walk-in. Over there are a few more fermenters. I have way down there is the uh, walk-in cooler I store my kegs in. And then over here is my office and grain storage. Chef, thanks for having me here today. I'm really excited. Between the birds, the beer, and now food. Well, right now we're doing a porter pizza, and uh, I chose this pizza because we have the most beer infused, or most beer in the pizza. Like I said, we have uh, about a gallon and a half of beer in the dough. a lot of beer. A lot of beer into the dough already, and um, we also braise our pork in the beer for about three hours. So you can now shred it up. Very nice. What kind of beer do you use? Uh, for the dough, we use Sierra Nevada, and for the porker, I believe we use the same one. Where did you get this idea as far as infusing the dough with the beer as opposed to making the crust with the grains? Basically replacing the milk that's in there with, with another liquid, which would be beer. Wonderful. It's yeah. a great idea. Now, do you think that the yeast in the beer helps that dough rise? Uh, yeah, actually does. We What we do, we do the same thing, same process. We get the beer up to 110 degrees, sit there, put our yeast in there, let it bloom for a little bit. I love it. I love and it. I love the fact that you have a brick oven pizza oven. You can't beat that. No. Fish topping this off with a little bit of coquita cheese and cilantro. And I'm going to top it off with this great IPA. Ooh, exciting. Oh, wow, that smells so great. All right, here we go. Wow. Awesome. Wow, that looks great. Hey, guys. Hey, Chris. Check this pizza out. It's that awesome. looks awesome. You guys mind if I have some? Please what? help yourself. Sweet. Thanks. Thanks, guys. What? That, Chris. Just, that just happened. <laughs> there you go. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Wait a minute. What is this? Uh, again, another passed out guy in the brewery. Hey! Watch that first step. It's a doozy. Hey, sorry. Checking out your lines here. Yeah, yeah. Everything was up to code. Yeah. Uh, Looking good, good, right? Yeah, looks good. Okay, looks thank good. you. Thanks. Um, I'm just, uh, all right. We, I have these. Well, I'll just, uh, leave you guys be then. Okay, all yeah. right. I'll see you guys. See you later, Chris. Hold on! How's it going? I put wort in here on Thursday. Brewed on Thursday. Put it in here, put the yeast in there. Now the yeast is eating the sugars, creating CO2 that you see bubbling out of that, uh, blow-off tube. And then also making alcohol. So we get alcohol and CO2 whenever yeast eats sugar. Pretty simple. Uh, in here, fermenter number five, we've got the second batch of Rosemary IPA. People love it so much, and I've always liked it that I knew we'd have to have it replaced real quick. So uh, we sell a lot of it, and we're gonna have more of it. So no one should need to worry that we're gonna run out. Do you have any plans to do a wild beer by any chance? I would uh, probably say that wild beers are going to be happening in the next six months. Oh yeah, all those, all those things. I can do whatever I want. Total freedom and flexibility. It's spicy or something. That's right. It's called ginger mofo. Okay. 
okay. because I want you to know there's ginger in there. That's what he Don't said. Don't think it's slightly gingery and maybe a hint in the back. No, no, it's right there. Yeah, no, he mentioned that. Well, that's kind of how I like to do all my beers. I want the flavor to be what stands out. If I do an American Pale Ale, I want it to be a great American Pale Ale. But okay. if I'm doing something that says grilled lemon, it's gonna be grilled lemon. If I'm doing something that's cherry, it's gonna be cherry. Okay. Is your rosemary real out front on the IPA? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> that's the feedback I've got. I think that craft beer people are flavor cravers. A lot of them smoke cigars. A lot of them like whiskey. It's always that I want the I want a lot of flavor. I don't want just to live through life to get. Uh, I don't want to eat Cheerios. The majority of people just know one or two different styles of beer. That's they go to the grocery store, they see you know, the, the Bud Miller cores. And there's so much more than that that I don't think a lot of people realize even exists. I mean, there's many different flavors of beer that you give give somebody a sample of this beer and they, they would say, well, that's not beer. That doesn't taste like what I am expecting that. I'd like to ask you a little bit about some of your new beers, Andrew, about your uh, rosemary IPA. In this area, there are rosemary bushes everywhere. So I just kind of thought, I like rosemary, it smells great, tastes great. I bet that would be great in a beer, so there we are. The grilled lemon cream ale. I kind of made it in reaction to Lyman Kugel Shandy and came out with an awesome flavor. It's my mom's favorite of my homebrew recipes, so if I didn't have it on, I would have been in big trouble. I noticed the, the subtle taste of smoke in it, and, and very subtle, I might add, but to, to me, it, it, it took a bit of the bite off of the tartness of, of the lemon. Yeah, absolutely. The grilled uh, caramelized thing takes away from that lemon biting acidity thing. Well, my personal favorite is your cinnamon honey nut brown. It's well, right it's, it's also a really fun name to say, cinnamon honey nut porter. It sounds like breakfast, right? So it sounds like breakfast to me. Well, uh, I have a couple friends that have brewed a honey nut brown, and we kind of call it honey nut beerios. And I thought I would throw some cinnamon in there just to twist it up a little bit. Guys, I can't wait to try this pizza. Chef Rene outdid himself. I can't wait to drink this beer. I can't wait to take Cheers. a nap. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>